Okay, in the past few days, I've had a few questions from you guys regarding uh, assigning or allocating a certain amount of CPU to your VirtualBox appliances. So I figured I'd take a little bit of time to go over some of the advanced settings that are available in VirtualBox, and we're going to do that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. had a number of people ask me how do you allocate so much of your CPU to a GNU Linux installation that you may have in VirtualBox. Now as many of you know I run a single core processor which is actually a 2.33 gigahertz and I have uh, 8 gigs of RAM installed. In this particular virtual machine that is labeled GNU Linux, I have uh, 2 gigs of RAM assigned to it and roughly 1.5, and it, this is just an estimation because I'm using 65% uh, of my uh, CPU. And in order to do this, let me show you how to set that up. Uh, let's say you created your virtual appliance you just need to make sure that you have it selected and go into settings here and then under system go into processor I have 65 percent here just using this execution cap um, also having PAE and X available uh, to uh, your uh, virtual machine can't hurt so I always have that enabled as well. This way, if I wanted to uh, have more memory uh, put in or um, any of the uh, PAE features of the host CPU can be exposed to the virtual machine. And while we're here, we might as well just have a look at some other settings. You can also uh, enable acceleration. My motherboard supports um, virtualization, so I actually have these options enabled and then of course in motherboard um, I have the hardware clock set to UTC time and enable an absolute pointing device I believe these are automatically checked by default if I can remember correctly all right uh, there are some general settings here where you can define the operating system and the version I'm running a 32-bit operating system so uh, and Actually, in this virtual appliance, I've had several distributions installed, so I just set it up as Linux and Mindriva. Here you have removable media options, your mini toolbar options that appear when you're using this program in full screen. You can also define where those snapshots are kept. And then you can make a description of the virtual appliance if you wish. In video display, this shows the full amount of video memory that you have available. You can assign as much of it or as little of it as you want. I decided to uh, allow it 64 megabytes. And then, of course, I have it en enabled to work with 3D acceleration. The enable 2D video acceleration is beneficial if you're using Windows as a, a, virtual, mach as a, a virtual machine. Uh, if you use it, um, you'll get non-optimal settings detected if you're using a Linux guest. In storage, you can define uh, which disks that you have in the machine at a given time. Of course, I don't have Descent OS in there, so I can actually uh, remove that disk if I want to. And then just put an empty one in there. In audio, you can choose the audio driver that is going to be used to play sound from the virtual appliance. I have it set at Pulse Audio, but if you have OSS installed or ALSA, you can select those as well. Personally, Pulse Audio works the best for me. 
Now, this is a hot tip for all any of you who want to use networking in VirtualBox and you are using Ubuntu 12.04 or Linux Mint 13. Some of you may notice that your virtual appliances will not have access to the internet. By default, when you set up a networking adapter, it is always set on NAT. And when it is set on NAT, the internet just will not work within your virtual appliance. So if you select a bridge adapter and set that at WLAN O, not e not ETHO, but WLAN O, what will happen is this will allow you to uh, get your. Um, now, I actually, that's my adapter on my computer. So, um, I have wireless setup, so when I, I'm bridging my actual internet connection that's coming in through WLAN O and sending that to the virtual appliance. So if you have a direct cable going into your computer, you might want to set bridged over to ETHO. And then there are some advanced settings in here as well. I just went with the default Intel Pro and uh, its MAC address and everything that it assigns there. Serial ports I really don't use for anything. But the thing is, you may want to use an external hard drive and that sort of thing. You can enable that here, as well as setting up shared folders. But to use shared folders in a guest operating system, or if you wish to use USB devices, you must have guest additions installed in your uh, virtual appliance. The best way to learn software in GNU Linux is to basically download it, install it, pull all the knobs, push all the buttons, and try and break it. Experimentation is key, I always say. Peace out. Mm -hmm.